What were the names of your father and mother? I asked. He looked at me with kind eyes. Don't waste your time with that crap, he said softly, but with unexpected force. I did not know what to say. It was as if someone else had uttered those words. A moment before, he had been a fumbling, stupid Indian, scratching his head. And then, in an instant, he had reversed the roles. I was the stupid one and he was staring at me with an incredible look that was not a look of arrogance or defiance or hatred or contempt. His eyes were kind and penetrating. I don't have any personal history, he said after a long pause. One day I found out that personal history was no longer necessary for me, and, like drinking, I dropped it. I stared at him, trying to detect the hidden meanings of his words. How can one drop one's personal history? One must first have the desire to drop it, and then one must proceed harmoniously to chop it off, little by little. Why should anyone have such a desire? I exclaimed. Perhaps you should tell me what you mean by dropping one's personal history, I said. To do away with it, that's what I mean, he replied cuttingly. Not having personal history was indeed an appealing concept. At least on the intellectual level, it gave me, however, a sense of loneliness which I found threatening and distasteful. I don't know how we ended up talking about this when all I wanted was some names for my charts, I said, trying to steer the conversation back to the topic I wanted. It's terribly simple, he said. The way we ended up talking about it was because I said that to ask questions about one's past is a bunch of crap. He slapped his thigh and laughed with great delight. It is best to erase all personal history, he said slowly, as if giving me time to write it down in my clumsy way, because that would make us free from the encumbering thoughts of other people. Little by little, you must create a fog around yourself. You must erase everything around you until nothing can be taken for granted, until nothing is no longer for sure or real. Your problem now is that you're too real. Your endeavors are too real. Your moods are too real. Don't take things so for granted. You must begin to erase yourself. What for? I asked belligerently. You see, we only have two alternatives. We either take everything for sure and real, or we don't. If we follow the first, we end up bored to death with ourselves and with the world. If we follow the second and erase personal history, we create a fog around us a very exciting and mysterious state.